Pakistan Prime Minister Shibaz Sharif said the aim of his day-long visit to the United Arab Emirates was not to seek loans, but joint collaborations and investments. And our brothers in UAE, it is not only a moment of great happiness and pride for us that we see talented UAE nationals here working for various UAE companies, banks, very talented Pakistanis sitting here and through their <clears throat> joint collaboration they are really making great efforts to promote digitizing of economy, various sectors of economy. And that's what we need to replicate in Pakistan. In legal news, three petitions were filed in the Lahore and Islamabad High Courts challenging a Pakistan Electronic Media Regulatory Authority notification that bars the reporting of subjudice matters. PEMRA's notification directed TV channels to report only written court orders and avoid commentary on pending cases, though live proceedings could be reported. The Press Association of the Supreme Court and the Islamabad High Court Journalists Association rejected the notification, calling it a violation of constitutional rights. The petitions seek to suspend and declare the PEMRA notification illegal. Meanwhile, the Federal Board of Revenue has blocked over 11,000 mobile phone SIMs of non-tax filers. FBR spokesperson reported that 11,252 SIMs had been blocked under the Income Tax General Order. This move is part of the FBR's effort to promote tax compliance. The Islamabad High Court clarified that its stay order related to blocking SIMs only protected the petitioner, zone and did not halt the SIM blocking initiative. The Israeli army has intensified its assault on Rafa as the International Court of Justice prepares to rule on Friday on a request by South Africa to order Israel to implement a ceasefire in Gaza, including in the southern city. Meanwhile, Israeli forces have killed 12 Palestinians in a two-day raid on Jenin in the occupied West Bank. The UN reports that more than 800,000 Palestinians have fled Rafa, with displaced families now living among the rubble. Since October 7, at least 35,800 people have been killed and 80,011 wounded in Israeli attacks on Gaza. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and Labour Party leader Keir Starmer have launched their election campaigns, each claiming they can resolve the country's economic and political issues. Sunak, whose Conservative Party has trailed Labour by about 20 points in polls since he became PM in October 2022, surprised many by calling for a July 4 election, earlier than expected. He insists the economy is improving and has plans to tackle illegal immigration. However, with significant price increases and a strained health service, convincing voters may be challenging. Sunak admitted that flights to send illegal migrants to Rwanda will not start before the election due to legal challenges. The election, announced amid protests in Downing Street, will decide control of the world's sixth largest economy. Both parties will focus on the economy, migration, tax, spending, and security. Despite 14 years of conservative rule marked by turmoil, polls suggest voters desire change, even if not entirely enthusiastic about Starmer and Labour. Starmer, a former chief prosecutor, has moved Labour back to the centre. He promises to bring stability and change, calling the election, the fight of our lives. If Labour wins, Starmer would be the sixth prime minister in eight years, highlighting the recent political instability. As the campaign begins, parliamentary activity will increase as the government decides which current legislations to prioritize. This includes Sunak's plan to impose strict anti-smoking rules, banning anyone aged 15 and under from ever buying cigarettes. Russian strikes on the eastern Ukrainian city of Kharkiv killed at least seven people, according to regional governor Olseny Hubov. In other news from Russia, authorities have arrested Vadim Shomarin, deputy head of Russia's general staff, on suspicion of large-scale bribe-taking, state news agencies report. 
Meanwhile, Norway has announced tighter restrictions on the entry of people from Russia in response to what it calls Russia's illegal war of aggression against Ukraine, prompting threats of retaliation from Moscow. In the US, presidential hopeful Donald Trump stated he would leverage his relationship with Russian President Vladimir Putin to secure the release of Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich from a Russian prison. Additionally, Russia's aviation authority has imposed temporary flight restrictions on Kazan airport for safety reasons, similar to previous measures related to Ukrainian drone activity. Finally, the Kremlin has announced that President Putin will hold wide-ranging talks with Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko in Minsk today and tomorrow.